He's present wherever you are. When you're home, with your wife, with your children at work, whatever you're doing, before you sleep, in your sleep, when you wake up, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana wa zidna ilman rabbal alameen Allahumma akhfir lana dhunubana wa yassir lana umurana wa adkhilna jannatika bi rahmatika ya rabbal alameen The topic obviously, brother just asked me what are you going to be talking about? I told well obviously, the whole night what is about the shaitan, right? So, I don't know if the first slide is up. Um, my lecture is about the enmity of the shaitan. That the shaitan is your and my enemy. And the first thing I had there is that it's really hard to imagine that you have such a fierce enemy. I, all of us want everybody to love us, right? And if someone tells us, it happens, you know, they're bold enough to come and tell you, I hate you. You'd maybe sleep, uh, lose sleep at night thinking of why does he, why does she hate me? How can I change that? And why is it that I'm not loved by anyone or everyone? I want to be loved by everyone. So to know that there is a being that really hates you and hates you so much that he wants to destroy you. And not that only that he wants to destroy you. His life mission is to destroy you and that he's with you all the time and his entire plot is to try to take you away from Allah Azza wa That's something that is hard to imagine. But as I said, it's true. That the shaitan is truly your fiercest and clearest and strongest enemy. The next slide so tells us that Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who teaches us this in the Quran. No other than Allah Azza wa Jal and then his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That he tells us, إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ I counted it in the Qur'an, that exact phrase happens to be repeated in the Qur'an five times. That is, how many times does Allah Azza wa Jalla have to tell you, and there are other verses, I'm going to go through them. But Allah has to tell you one time after another, in more than one occasion, in more than one surah, this is your enemy. And then another time, this is your enemy. And not only an enemy, mubin, he's a clear enemy. You can't miss him. If you listen to the description that Allah has for him and what has happened before, and you listen to the statements of this Prophet wasallam, it will be clear to you that he is the clearest and most pronounced enemy that you have. The next slide, وَنَدَاهُمَا رَبُّهُمَا It begins there. أَلَمْ أَنْهَكُمَا عَنْ تِلْكُمَا الشَّجَرَ وَأَقُلْ لَكُمَا إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمَا عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ it begins there when the shaitan had this highest level or belonged to the highest level where he was worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal alongside the angels of Allah. Meaning that you really can't climb any higher. Then he notices that Allah is creating this new being. And he har harbors in his heart inside that I'm going to be an enemy of this thing. I'm envious of it, envious of the special attention it has. So, in If he's given power over me, I'll disobey him. And if I'm given power over him, I'll destroy him. So from the beginning, there is this deep corruption and intent that they are either eat me or him. And of course, that follows to the progeny. And here Allah Azza wa Jal is speaking to both Adam and Hawa and telling them and telling us by extension he is telling them did not I forbid you to eat from that tree and tell you that that is a clear enemy of yours so don't listen to him don't be tempted by him the strange thing is that if this happened and was true with Adam and Ummuna our mother Hawa if it is true with them and they had no prior experience with Iblis before this. The problem is that we continue to be deceived by the shaitan, though we have so many other instances that attest from our personal life, because he 
tempted us so many times. And from also stories that precede us, happened to people before us, that he tempts and destroys and keeps doing this over and over and over, and yet we do not take him or consider him to be a clear enemy. And here is ironic. This ayah has a little bit of irony in it. So Allah is telling humanity, and maybe Allah Azza wa Jalla is speaking to some of us tonight. Are you taking the shaitan and his progeny? Because it's his progeny against the progeny of Adam. Are you taking the shaitan and his progeny as your allies, as your friends, as your confidants, as your advisors and supporters? Instead of me, and they are your enemies, what a, what a terrible exchange and substitute this is for the aggressors. That you go and seek your enemy. No sane person does that, by the way. If you know that you have a friend, and you, have, you know that you have an enemy. Someone who wants your success and someone who wants your destruction. And you go and you make your enemy your friend and your friend your enemy. You will say that that person is what? What do you call that person? What? Give me a name. Title, adjective, anything. Insane. So that person is insane. That person is out of his mind. He's stupid. So Allah is telling them, do you do this? And you know what they want to do with you? So what, what is it? You know what the worst exchange that is for the aggressors. And here, the last ayah I'll mention, in the shaytana lakum adu, fattakhiduhu aduwa. Indeed, the shaytan is an enemy of yours, so take him as an enemy. He calls his followers, his companions, those who are with him, so that he calls them to what? So that they will be of the people of hellfire. So you know the destination Allah is telling you. Do you know the destination? Yes. Where is he going to take you? It's like on a train. You're going to get on that train. Where are you going to go? Where? Hell. So you want to get on that train? No, obviously. So the shaitan is an enemy of yours, so take him as an enemy. It's interesting that Allah doesn't only say he's an enemy. He only says he's an enemy, so adopt him as an enemy. And what does that mean? Means, following slide. As he is an enemy of yours, you should be his enemy. As he is fighting you, you should do what with him? Fight him. As he is trying to destroy you and wage, in fact, jihad, relentless jihad against you, what should you do? Wage jihad against the shaitan. Nothing less than waging jihad against the shaitan. In fact, as some of the salaf have said, the greatest jihad, not to diminish the other types of jihad, but to point to priorities. He says, the greatest jihad that you have is the jihad against yourself and your shaitan. Some of the salaf had said, the jihad is made of ten parts. One part of the ten is for the outside and nine out of the ten is on the inside. Is against inside forces. So you have to wage a jihad against the shaitan. So this is what Allah is telling you. Have you taken him as an enemy? Well, if you listen to his whispers, you haven't taken him as an enemy. If you're not siding with Allah Azza wa Jal, you're not taking him as an enemy. If you do not consider his tricks and try to protect yourself from them, are you consider him as an enemy? Probably not. I want to talk insha'Allah, and this is what the lecture is supposed to do. It's as an introduction to the other two lectures that will follow insha'Allah. I want to discuss with you, insha'Allah, the extent of the enmity of the shaitan. Some of it may be new. Some of it we've been exposed to before. But the first thing is that every counsel, every advice, every opinion that comes from the shaitan has only one goal. And that goal is to destroy you and take you away from Allah Azza wa Jal. إِنَّمَا يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالسُّوءِ وَالْفَحْشَاءِ Exclusively, he only commands you to commit minor and major sins. 
and that you will say about Allah Azza wa Jal that which you do not know, which is the basis of all evil. Shirk is included in it, bid'ah is included in it, sin is included in it, meaning that whatever whisper comes to you from the shaitan, if he tries to deceive you thinking, oh, this might be good for me, that haram that he's telling me to do might be good for me, Allah contradicts that claim by telling you what? Innama, the only thing that he wants from his whisper is sin and for you to oppose Allah Azza wa Jal. Meaning, you know, maybe, maybe if I take a little bit of that haram and I can use it for the halal. Maybe if I can take a haram glance and maybe I can use it for the halal. Maybe if I do a little bit of this haram and then I can compensate for it later. Allah is telling you it doesn't work like that with him because he already has a plan for you. And if you listen to that whisper, he's dragging you to hellfire. He never gives you ever good advice. So your goal should be from now on, inshallah, if we do not know this, that you have to oppose and contradict every whisper from the shaitan. Every advice, well, this is really not advice, every advice coming from the shaitan is something that you would have to avoid. Allah also says, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَن يُوْقِعَ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ فِي الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرْ وَيَصُدَّكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَعَنِ الصَّلَاةِ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُونَ The same, the same goal and purpose, Allah Azza wa Jal says. Indeed, the exclusive aim of the shaitan is that he wants to create friction and hatred between you. Adawa and baghda. For you to hate each other inside from your own heart and then for that hatred to translate into animosity, physical animosity on the outside. This is what he wants. For you to hate your brother and for your sister inside the masjid. For you to hate your spouse. For the children to hate their parents. For them to hate the imam, for the imam to hate the congregation, for the leader to hate the rule, for the uh, rule to hate the rule, for everybody to hate everybody else. Because when they hate everyone, you will fight them. You will quarrel with them. You'll try to destroy them. And he uses tools, as Allah Azza wa Jal says, fil khamri wal maysir, alcohol and gambling, and to take you away from Allah Azza wa Jal and from a salah. So will you stop? Will you stab Allah Azza wa Jal is telling you after knowing the aim of the shaitan? The next thing that he does, the extent of that enmity, is that the he doesn't only whisper. Like a whisper here and a whisper there, maybe you can say, okay, I can live with this and reach Allah Azza wa Jal. His plan doesn't stop with small whispers. He creates an entire structure, an entire path, a parallel system Call it ideology, political, economic, whatever, but he creates a parallel system that opposes the path of Allah Azza wa completely. And he walks this path and he calls his followers with his whispers, with his example, walk my path. لا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان Do not follow. The footsteps of the shaitan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Because if you follow the footsteps of the shaitan, he commands fahsha and munkar, the greatest repulsive sins, and also every type of sin. And Allah says, and if not for Allah's favor upon you. And this begins, you know, not to trample over, you know, the next lectures, inshallah, I will leave it to them. But it just starts to give you a hint of how do I overcome the shaitan? Allah says, and if not for the favor of Allah and his mercy upon you, no one among you can be purified. No one among you can conquer the shaitan or escape him. But Allah does. Allah purifies you. Allah guides you. So the shaitan creates, as I said, a complete system. And one of the things that you take from this ayah is that we're supposed to have a model and this model on this earth is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his sunnah means that we observe how he lived, how he walked, how he taught. We follow his footsteps. And the footsteps of the shaitan oppose the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So once you find yourself with your foot upon the trace of the shaitan and you realize it, you immediately have to take it Lift it immediately and seek the footstep, the trace of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follow him there. And this is how you can save yourself and escape the shaitan. The following slide, it tells you something about his dedication. 
You may forget, but he doesn't. You may relent, but he doesn't. You may sleep and get distracted, but he doesn't. He's always there. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in this hadith, in the shaytana yahduru ahadakum inda kulli shay'in min sha'ni. He's present wherever you are. He's present whatever you are doing, he's there. Kind of scary a little bit to think about it. But like an uninvited guest, he's always there. So he says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this hadith, even when you're eating, he's there. So he's saying the direction of the Prophet ﷺ, if you drop a piece of food on the floor, don't leave it for the shaitan, take it, wipe away the dirt and then eat it. Because if you don't do this, the shaitan will eat it. So the shaitan is with you when you're home. The shaitan is with you as soon as you leave your house. The shaitan is with you in your vehicle, with your wife, with your children at work, whatever you're doing. Before you sleep, in your sleep, when you wake up, the shaitan is always there. So you understand the danger of the shaitan? Because his plan is not, he's not part-time misguiding you. He's full-time, okay? Overtime. Trying to take you away from Allah Azza wa Jal. So when you're eating, when you're doing anything, the shaitan is with you. So that tells you that you have, you are facing, subhanAllah, a strong enemy. And that strong enemy needs strength on your part to be able to repel him. Number four, he eats your food and steals its barakah. You understand this from the previous hadith and from another hadith from the Prophet ﷺ, I didn't put it here, where it says that the Prophet ﷺ was talking to someone who came and to complain to them, to the Prophet, that we eat but we don't find satisfaction, we're not full when we eat, O Prophet of Allah. So the Prophet tells them, one of the things he says that perhaps you do not mention Allah's name before you eat. They say yes. He says, mention Allah's name and protect your food from the shaitan and you will be full. So the shaitan even comes between you and your food, between you and nourishment. Steals as much of it as he can, takes the barakah away, the nourishment away from you. A person who wants to stop you even from eating, from being healthy, has even more disastrous plan for you. So if you understand his readiness and how vile he is, you have to be ready for him. The next slide. When is the last time you had a nightmare? Anyone? Nothing, you know, you know embarrassing about it. Anyone? Yeah? No one? No one? Okay, fine. So, if you had one, the Prophet ﷺ tells you that dreams are of three parts. One of them comes from your own self, and one of them, which is good, the good type of dream, comes from Allah Azza wa Jal. And then the bad type of dream, the terrifying dream, the nightmares that you have, they come to you from the shaitan. The thing that terrifies you and saddens you comes to you from the shaitan. So he says in this hadith, Ru'ya, the good dream is from Allah. And Al-Hulum, the bad dream is from the shaitan. So if you see something in your sleep that you hate, spittle or spit to your left three times and seek Allah's refuge from that, what you, what you saw, it's not going to hurt you. So even when you are sleeping, the shaitan is trying to do his best to disturb your sleep to terrify you in your sleep, to sadden you when you wake up. So he, even when you're resting, he doesn't let go of you. Number six, the shaitan can even make you sick. When Ayyub alayhi salam in the Quran speaks to Allah Azza wa Jal, he says in Surah Sad, وَذْكُرْ عَبْدَنَا أَيُّوبُ إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الشَّيْطَانُ he says, Ya Allah, the shaitan has touched me with pain and torment. Meaning that the shaitan was the cause of my pain and is the cause of my pain. So it's possible, whether it is through the envy of jinn or whether the actual, the, through the actual touch of the shaitan, that the shaitan can make humans sick. 
And I don't mean by that that you start interpreting every type of sickness that you have as the direct influence of the shaitan. I'm not saying this, but I'm pointing out to the possibility of him making you and me sick. And again, it elucidates and underlines how much he hates you and how much he wants to make your life miserable, not only this life, but also the one to come. Number seven, I said that shaitan doesn't create poverty. Allah Azza wa Jal makes some people poor, makes some people rich. But he extensuates, he exasperates the distinction. And if you hear about class warfare or class distinction and the disappearance of the middle class, you can trace some of that or all of it to greed. And you can trace greed to human weakness that is strengthened by the shaitan. So whenever you want to spend and give for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, what does the shaitan come and tell you? Ironic again, he says, don't spend, you don't have enough. Don't spend, you'll be poor. Keep your money for yourself, keep your money for your family, save it. Because if you spend, you lose, and if you lose, you're never going to be able to get it back. So he promises you poverty so that you would never spend. But now when it comes to spending on your own self, on the trivial, on, on the unnecessary, buying the newest brand bags and shoes, oops, okay. buys the newest technology that you really don't need, what does shaitan say? Go ahead, spend. And actually spend a little more and upgrade and buy the latest one. And the thing that you bought last year is already old, so buy the newest, newest thing. And he doesn't restrain you. And the more that you spend and the more that you overspend there, the happier he is. Because there, that's wastefulness. So on the one hand, wastefulness, go and waste all of your money. That's fine. Because this is tabdeer and Allah Azza wa says, Inna al-mubadhirina kanu ikhwan al-shayateen. So those who are wasteful are the companions of the shaitan. But then when it comes to true cause for spending, for sadaqah, for building things that Allah Azza wa loves for helping the needy, he says, keep your money to yourself. And that of course increases the gap between the wealthy and the poor. The poor do not receive money from the wealthy and the wealthy disdain the poor and the wealthy spend more and more on, on, on you know, whatever is what they call it, kamaliyat, unnecessities, extravagance, which makes the poor hate them even more and more. And that eventually, if it's not restrained, will create conflict between members of a single society. Number eight, he whispers different things based on your situation and this requires some depth of understanding from the worshiper from the seeker from the muslim from the mu'min man and woman he's not going to come and whisper to you the same exact thing he whispers to your brother and si sister sitting next to you he understands because each one of us has a qareen has a companion shaitan he understands your strength and weaknesses where you're at in your taqwa what you can do and what you cannot do. So he whispers exactly what you need to hear. What you like to hear. He comes and visits you from your weakness. So if you're a sinful person, he comes and tells you there is no hope for you. You're so far away from Allah, Azza wa Jal, just continue doing whatever you're doing. There is no mercy for Allah to you or people who are like you. Repentance is difficult. Forgiveness is far. Just keep living your life. If you are a person who's trying to come close to Allah Azza wa Dali, understand that thing is not going to happen. That's not going to work for you. So the tactic switches and he tries to inflate your ego. And he says you're the best of people who pray and the best of people who donate and the best of people who speak and the best of people who study. So here, if you worship Allah, he tries with arrogance. And if you are away from Allah, he tries it with hopelessness and despair. And there is a book by an Imam Ibn al-Jawzi, Talbisu Iblis. 
He visits almost every category. Scholars, worshippers of Allah Azza wa Jal, those who do this, those who do that. And he tells us how the shaitan approaches them and how his approach is different with each group and how he tries to distract each group in a different way. Tries to inflate their ego and take them away from Allah Azza wa Jal. And rather than they worship Allah, they start worshipping their own selves and their own distractions. So the shaitan knows you very well, knows your weaknesses, susceptibilities, strengths. What are you able to do and not? And he attacks you from that direction. Number nine. He does something terrible, which is that he confuses you about Allah Azza wa Jal and about your religion. And tries to distract you with the temptations of this dunya. With the little things of this world to take you away from Allah Azza wa Jal and make the clear path of Allah that He had made clear seem so obscure and distant that it's hard to reach. Religion that is supposed to be natural in our hearts and in our minds becomes something archaic. And that's a whisper from the shaitan. Allah Azza wa Jal, whose existence should be so self-evident that no one should question. Now we have to gather proof after proof to secure in a person's mind that Allah Azza wa Jal exists. The fact that Allah Azza wa Jal sends prophets of Allah and that these prophets are supported with clear miracles is so clear, yet the shaitan confuses this matter so much with fake claims, with fake prophets, that it became, became at times so hard to distinguish those who are telling the truth and so those who are not. Worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal is so sweet and so peaceful and brings so much comfort to your heart that everybody should be naturally seeking it. Yet the shaitan plays on our weaknesses and love for the dunya so much that we forget about the comfort of religion and try to find comfort in the dunya. So he comes and he hijacks us completely. Allah Azza wa Jal, through his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, says, Inni khalaqtu ibadi hunafa. I've created my slaves, everyone, every human, hunafa, Muslims. Then the shayateen, the devils came and hijacked them, kidnapped them, and took them away from their religion. So when it comes to Allah, to religion of Islam, to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to the comfort and joy you find in religion, all that he tries to replace with comfort and joy in dunya, with doubt, with anxiety, so that we never find comfort in the Allah, with Allah azza wa jal. He creates hatred and friction and fans the flames of war and death. Whenever there is conflict in this dunya, even conflict within Muslims, even conflicts within Muslims, what does the Prophet ﷺ say? Again, I want you to see how the shaitan moves. Never gives up. You think, oh, now I've, I've escaped you. Now, alhamdulillah, I'm Muslim, I've escaped shirk, now I'm fine. He's never done with you. When the Prophet ﷺ opened Arabia, what did he tell the Sahaba? إن الشيطان قد يأس أن يعبد في أن يعبد في جزيرة العرب. The shaytan had given up on the fact that he'd be worshipped in Arabia, meaning no Islam anymore, no idols. Did he quit? No, there is Plan B. If I can't get A, I'm gonna get Plan B. What is Plan B? ولكن في التحريش بينكم. But he will create friction and hatred between you. If I can't get them here, I'll get them that way. So if I can get them through shirk, I'll make them so distracted by hating each other and then killing each other, then I'll achieve what at least a minimum of what I tried to achieve. And this is what you find today. Yes, we're Muslims, but we do, we, do we really love each other as the Sahaba used to love each other? Do we serve each other as the Sahaba used to serve each other? There is tahrish. And you want to understand where does this friction come from? Well, why are there so many conflicts in the world today where we are on the verge of this war and that war? Why do we hate each other so much? You can trace it back to the shaitan. 
And this is, of course, not to excuse the human race, ourselves, from any responsibility. But, but it is that we are listening to someone else. And if we stop listening to the shaitan and we listen to Allah Azza wa Jal, these conflicts will disappear. And there will come a time when they will disappear. So we need to know, inshallah, this is, by the way, it's not really mine. Anyway, I didn't have like any, any graph or anything. So what we need to know, inshallah, are two important things. If it's established in our hearts and our minds that the shaitan is our enemy, and if Allah commands you, it's a command from Allah Azza wa he's an enemy, so adopt him as an enemy, meaning now you have to wage war against the shaitan. You have to protect yourself from him. How do you protect yourself from someone that you do not know? How? So you have to understand how the shaitan operates. How he deceives. How does he trick? And by the way, the tricks of the shaitan, if you were only to read the books of Allah, the book of Allah and the sunnah of his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and add to it the guidance of the salaf, you'll understand the tricks of the shaitan. There'll hardly be anything new that they did not address if you just read them and understand them. So you need to understand the shaitan better and the way, he the way that he operates. And then you need to understand. After you understand him, understand how you establish defenses against the shaitan and launch a counterattack. So rather than him destroying you, you destroy him. And this is inshallah, this is my you know, prep for the next coming lectures inshallah, which will be addressing these two topics. So I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us of those who benefit from the event tonight to teach us our religion, teach us the plots of the shaitan and how do we protect ourselves and our families from it to make us of those who listen to the Rahman rather than listen to the shaitan and make their abode the highest of Jinan, the highest of Jannah, not where Ghadab rahman is, not where Jahannam is. Ameen Ya Rabbal Alameen. Jazakumullahu khaira for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.